all, we should write that as a problem. So, we can usually tell the problem I said in the last class by reading the introduction and the uh, conclusion. So, if we look at the conclusion here, it can help us to understand the problem. It says the next step. So, uh, they have some question about they want to continue growing and they need to decide what branding to use. Should they use a Chinese branding or should they use some uh, other type of branding? So, uh, we have to decide on the best way problem is to decide on the best way <laughs> so how are we going to make branding for the car in China? Okay, so right, you should write down the problem. We have the information. So, in this case, some of the information at the start is kind of background information. Usually, at the start of the case study, they uh, give us some background information that might not be, we don't have to write down in the end as information which is focused on our problem. There might just be a small part. It's just a background to uh, give us an idea of the uh, case. So then let's uh, go through and just write down just briefly the information. So we'll start with the automobile industry in China. So do you understand automotive? It's easier just to say car, right? But the, it's easier to say car, but English is not that easy in business. They use the long words sometimes. They usually say automotive industry. So the first part is market size. Who was reading this part? Uh, me. Yes, so you can tell us just a couple of sentences about this. Uh, so there are 250 million uh, uh, people who are defined to be a middle class. And uh, uh, so these people are the target market. And uh, during uh, 1992 to, to uh, 2002, uh, Chinese automotive industry grew at 15%, uh, which is 10 times to the uh, global average. Do you want to be selling cars in this market? Yes. If you have uh, more than 250 million customers. Yeah. In the US, the population is 300 million, right? Yes. And it's growing at 15% a year, right? Yeah. Not a bad market for selling cars if you're Kia or Hyundai, right? Yes. Uh, next one, the market segment. Who was reading market segment? The next person on the list. On the attendance list. Uh, not here today. Uh, <laughs> oh, she's here. Uh, it's Song Chahi. Song Gahi. Yes. Uh, in the passenger car market, students comprise the biggest segment, and the most popular segment is C1 and C2, due to their average size and moderate fuel consumption. So, students. C1 and C2. What is a C1 and C2 sedan? We don't, we won't turn on the, we can look later at the exhibit, but uh, it's about just a small family car, like, uh, do you know the Avante? Hyundai Avante? It's a very popular car in Korea, right? So we're talking about a sedan is just a uh, four-door normal car. Okay, so we 
we look at later how they are divided. This is 90% of the passenger purchases. So 90% of the passenger purchase is a sit-down. Do you understand multi-purpose vehicle? Multi-purpose vehicle? Or sports utility vehicles? SUV? SUV is a big, usually big one with a lot of doors. Multi-purpose vehicle usually is a Jeep. In Korea, the Jeep is quite popular. Do you understand the Jeep? Yeah. Yes. How do you say Jeep in Korean? Jeep. 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 <laughs> you learned a new Korean word today. <laughs> Jeep. Right. So, what about the demand structure? He was reading about demand structure, yes? Uh, price and volume of each of the way to important factors affecting ventures and consumer before based on all emotional and uh, uh, instable attributes such as style and brand, image way important factors affecting choice in car uh, purchases, especially for larger car. So Chinese customers are quite price sensitive. Do you understand price sensitive? And they're also, it says here, emotional. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> actually, they don't have big... Uh, are Chinese people very religious? Are Chinese people very religious? What does religion say? Do they, are, do they have a religion? Do they feel strongly about their religion? Uh, maybe no. Not so many, right? So, actually there is kind of vacuum because there is no religion. So some people follow some brand more strongly, right? Yeah. It's like they're, they love the brand or something like that. So the brand can be also important in, in China, right? They feel emotional about the brand. They buy the brand, it's like a club. A little bit like Apple. Right? Some people just buy Apple because they, they love the brand and they, they feel like they're an Apple person. Right? They feel like they're young and they're hip and they're cool. So I'm part of the group or the club of Apple. Right? So brand is, import, is important. China style and brand. So we can see there's a thing here. Uh, they made the top 10 factors affecting brand choice. So they ask the people, what is, why do you choose the brand? Number one in China, price. Why do I choose this car? Because of the price. Okay, people are price sensitive. Are you price sensitive? Yes. Are you price sensitive? Do you buy things because they're price? Yes. Do you always complain about prices? Not always. I'm quite price sensitive. It's really fun to go with me on holidays because all the time I just talk about the prices. <laughs> we go to a restaurant, I just say, it's really expensive. How can they charge that much for this food? And then if we go to the hotel, no, no, that hotel is too expensive. We need to go to a cheaper one. Then pay the money. Oh, how can it be so expensive? Then take the bus. What? What's the price for, how can the bus ticket be so expensive? Right? You want, no, you can't buy that. That's too expensive. Do you want to go on holidays with me? <laughs> Sounds like fun, right? Always talking about the price. Huh? So, girls like that, right? When men are always complaining about prices and talking about the price. Right? No. No? <laughs> you don't like that? Really? So, if you're price sensitive, uh, then you, price is important of the brand. Then, the, but the next is style or outlook. Then fuel efficiency. Only after this, engine performance and safety. Okay. Uh, if you look at another country, safety might be up at the top. <coughs> what about you? If you're buying a car, what do you think would be the most important factor? For me, it's also price. If you see my car, then you'll understand. <laughs> Price and design. Hmm? Price and design? And Anybody else? Security. Security. Safety. Okay. 
So the next one is the competitive situation. Who was reading this part? Competitive situation. Oh, young Shin. Did you read the competitive situation? What can you tell us? Competitive situation is 76, 145 car company in China. And then 43 car company is passenger car company. And Dream Venture has 70% market share in passenger car market. It was triggered to China foreign capital investment policy and first automobile industry policy in 1994. And foreign car company wants transport management to experience and technology. Okay, so we have a joint venture policy which was promoted by the government, right? Yes. Joint ventures between international and joint Chinese is 70% of the market. So you said the government wanted to promote yes. transfer of technology. Yes. So they want to make a joint venture policy, right? They want to encourage the joint venture. China has quite strict regulations. So we said that it's a good idea for a foreign company to make a joint venture. But sometimes it's not even possible for the company to go there by themselves. The government might not give them permission to build their own factory or do their FDI. Okay? So they might have to follow the government policy and just make a joint venture. So what are the biggest joint ventures of the car industry in China? Uh, first automotive workshop and Dongfeng Motor. They're the Chinese companies. So what are the top three joint ventures? Shanghai uh, GM, Shanghai Volkswagen and FAW Volkswagen. Okay, so we can see GM and Volkswagen are the main companies, right? Yes. Do you think that's a good strategy by China? The Chinese companies getting 50% of the profits as well as GM and Volkswagen? Do you, do you think it was a good idea of the Chinese government to encourage the foreign companies to make a joint venture? Or make this regulation, they need to make a joint venture? So the foreign car companies want, want to get this market in China, right? So the Chinese government has some negotiating power, so they can say, okay, you need to make a joint venture. So they made the joint <coughs> ventures, and we see Volkswagen. I was in Shanghai, you can see so many Volkswagen cars in Shanghai. You can see Shanghai Volkswagen here. So, uh, let's go on to the next part, the car brands. Who read the next part? Car brands. So I have to call the name every time. Mm -hmm. Don't know which part you read. Song Mi Jin. The Chinese passenger car market was highly competitive. A competitive. Every year, those of new car models were launched. So, so uh, just can you just summarize in one or two sentences yeah. the main point? Yes. Okay. okay. <laughs> and the results of the high number of car models, the car model numbers. So it's highly competitive. Yes. Uh, we have a lot of different brands. So. We have a lot of models. So, for example, we have 38 models introduced in 2006. Okay, any other information from here? So, we'll have, we can have a look at uh, later when we turn on the PPT, we can look at the exhibits. Uh, the market dynamic in China. Who read that part? Wang Yen, Yun Song Ho. Not here today. Oh, yes. So uh, just the market dynamics. Uh, at that time, the banks were the banks are important to China. So the banks were cutting credit. Chinese government 
controls the bank. So one of the ways that Chinese government can control the economy in China is by telling the banks, don't give loans to people, or give loans to people. <coughs> also for housing markets. Okay? The other countries can't do it like that because the banks are private banks. Just the central bank is an independent organization which supervises banks. So the central bank, not the government, will tell the banks what to do. But the central bank is not going to be that uh, interfering in the bank's business, not much. But in China, government controls the banks. Okay? So the government can tell the banks, give more loans to people, give less loans to people. Okay? Does that affect the car industry? The government policy on people getting loans and not getting loans? Yes, how does it affect the car industry? What does the car industry want? They want people to get loans, right? So we can see that the financial crisis, uh, there was very low interest rates, a lot of people got a lot of loans, were buying a lot of cars and houses and so on. Then they made a mistake. They put up the interest rate very quickly in one year, from 1% to 5% in the US or in the UK. Even in Korea, they followed the US, right? Then, what happened was people stopped taking loans, they stopped buying houses, and they stopped buying cars, and the economy had a big problem. So the flow of credit is important to every economy. Do you understand credit, flow of credit? Banks giving loans or not giving loans, interest rate is high or low, people are taking loans or not. Okay. Uh, at the time the oil price was high, so this was before the financial crisis, a similar situation to the US or the UK. If you have a double problem of low, high interest rates, not many loans, and high oil price, it's not going to be good for the economy, one of the reasons for the crisis. So then a Hyundai Motor Company, yes, what can you tell us about Hyundai? Um, 1967, uh, it is established, it was established. And partnership with ports and manufacturing cars and light trucks. And away from the licensing agreement, mm -hmm. uh, they built fitted first the floor passenger car pony. Yeah. Passenger car pony yeah. was very popular. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else? Mid 1970s. So what about these days? These days. These days. Mm -hmm. um, they have man manufacturing subs subsidiaries in other companies to overseas. Countries, right? Other countries. Yeah. Yes. Where? Where does it manufacture? How many countries? I didn't. We can see here China, Egypt, India, Indonesia, Iran, Malaysia, Russia, Sudan, <laughs> Turkey, the US, and Venezuela. So it has manufacturing in all those countries. Okay. Um, what's its long-term objective? The objective. What's the objective of the company? Elevated its value to become one of the world's top five automotive brands. So the objective is to be the world top five. Automotive brand. Are you checking in the dictionary? Some word. Okay. Uh, then we are we skipped about the Kia. So Beijing Hyundai Motor Corporation. Yes. Uh, in 2000. We're going to call this B, just B M, B H uh -huh. M C for short. Mm -hmm. uh, in 2012, Hyundai Motor Company entered into a 50-50 joint venture with uh, B H, oi, Beijing Automotive Investment Company, forming uh, the B H M C, with a well-teamed release of new models and an efficient supply chain and production process. BHMC quickly became the fourth largest selling automobile market in China in 2005. 
And to support the aggressive sales growth of BHMC in China, the company planned to expand its distribution and after-sales service network. Okay. So there was something about the taxis. Uh, yes. Um. Um, Hyundai Sonata and Elantra were designed by Beijing um, municipal authorities to be the official taxi models. Um, so one of the reasons there's so many Volkswagen in Shanghai is they have the official taxis, all the taxis are Volkswagen, right? In Beijing, this company got the contract. Um, what is their most important car? Uh, their setting? Elantra. Do you guys know the Elantra in Korea? Hyundai Elantra, do you know? Yeah. Accent and Sonata. Mm -hmm. You know those brands? Yes. Yeah. So Elantra was the top one, 62%. So, Elantra is the, was voted one year the best uh, family car. Okay, uh, then the branding strategy of Hyundai. Um. <coughs> In addition to the international name, Hyundai Motor Company had a Chinese name in Korea as well. It, um, because President of Hyundai Motor Corp Corporation told, when we do business in China, we need to use local language to communicate with our customers, so our nation can be too. Okay, so they have a Chinese name. Mm -hmm. So we have a slogan. You understand slogan? Mm -hmm. A logo. So uh, here we have this. Are you familiar with this slogan and logo? Of yes. Don't I drive your way? Okay. It shows uh, what is what does it mean? This what does the brand mean? The slogan, slogan. the H. What does the H mean? Why did they make the H like this? Hyundai Motor Company has their own corporate identified and brand of their brand slogan with the logo and company name. Mm -hmm. The oval shape symbol with the slated letter H was meant to convey the dynamic feeling of speed. Okay, so also it means the joining hands between the worker oh, yes. and the factory. Do you yes. think this means joining hands between the workers and the owners, <laughs> and the customers? No, you can't see that in the picture. Do you, does it make you think about speed? No. No? But that's why they made it, right? They want people to think about speed. Speed and uh, cooperation. So if we look at this, it looks a little bit like joining hands, right? And also it's slanted to mean speed. So cooperation or harmony. Harmony is is uh, Asian more important in Asia, right? And Hyundai Motor Company has a Chinese name. Uh, Shandai means modern and stylish. Is that right? If you see the word Hyundai, do you think modern and stylish? <laughs> no, no. The Chinese characters? Hmm? But, but the word means uh, modern. So I'm not going to write the Chinese character. Do you want me to write the character? Well, Chinese character? It takes too long. Anyway, the Chinese character is Shandai. This is the Chinese name for the company, right? They made a Beijing Hyundai. So the joint venture's name is in Chinese, right? This is the Chinese characters. And it's Beijing, modern and stylish. So we can see this is the this is the Chi this is the one in globally, and this is the Chinese one. It's in Chinese. Okay? Also, they have English, uh, drive your way, underneath. Mm -hmm. So as you said, 
there's this quote saying, we do business in China, we need to use the Chinese language to communicate with the customers, right? So, local language for communication. Okay, anything else? <laughs> so, there was some other research that some customers prefer the international name. So, Toyota put uh, both their Chinese name and their international name on their cars together, both of them. Toyota's Chinese name is Feng Chen. What does Feng Chen mean? So what do you recommend to companies doing business in China? What do you think? For example, if a Chinese company, can you tell me an example of one Chinese company? Um, Any Chinese company? Local Chinese company, just tell me the name. Uh, <laughs> what toothpaste, toothpaste brand do you buy? Xiaomi. Uh, Xiaomi. Xiaomi, <laughs> that's not too bad, right? But if you're going to sell Xiaomi in the UK, are you going to use the Chinese name or are you going to make a new name for the UK? New name, of course. New name for the UK, right? People can't remember very well or pronounce properly, right? But what about foreign companies in China? Do you think foreign companies in China need to make Chinese names? Or sometimes the international name is okay? Sometimes the international name is okay. Is, okay, is it okay for you to remember the English sounding name? Yes. It is? Yeah. So it's not? It's easier for you to remember that. So Toyota also had their own name. So then brand positioning. Kia and Hyundai they made an agreement about differentiated images in order to increase value of each of the company. And the Hyundai is not a So Hyundai's one is uh, drive your way. So what are they trying to do? And That's this means that they're standing by the side of the customer and they are encouraging encouraging their confidence. Um, in so China we find a confident image. Yeah, and in China they're trying to do it in a familiar way rather than incorporate Okay. So do you feel, if you read this, do you feel confident and refined? Yeah, it makes me to think that I can drive my own way, I can drive whatever I want in my car. Okay. So, uh, they have this English, they write this in English, in the logo. Do you think the customers can understand the logo if it's in English? No. Hmm? Here underneath it says in English, drive your way. What do you think? Would you write that in Chinese or not? Yes. Think it might be better? Okay, so they left some part in English. So that this consumers didn't really understand this this uh, thing. So then brand power. Yes. Actually there is not much information. Mm -hmm. but they say they conducted a research in China, uh, and brand power research, and Chinese uh, viewed Hyundai as stylish and thoughtful. So they made a brand power index. Yeah. What is a brand power index? Um, it uh, it shows how how the customers how, how much are they how much they are aware of the brand. Okay, so uh, they ask, find out, are they aware, and do they consider the brand when they're buying one? Okay, 
So, what was the result? Um, the result was lower than expected. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, what I got from this article here, they still uh, see themselves as second tier group. Mm -hmm. Which means like better than they they were actually found in the study. Okay. So we'll, we'll look at this exhibit later just to understand this. So they are checking things like awareness, mainly awareness. The awareness of their brand was 92%. So 92% was quite high, above average. <coughs> but are they familiar with the brand? Do you understand familiar? Mm -hmm. Aware just means you know it exists. Familiar means you know something about it, more information about it. Some familiarity, do you have an opinion about this brand? Just around 50%. Okay, so maybe I've heard of some brand. Okay, like uh, Dolce & Gabbana. I heard the name before. But I never bought their product, or actually I don't really know what their product is, so I don't have any opinion about them. Do you understand the difference? So, they want to change people from being just aware to being familiar and then to considering their brand when they're buying the product. So, uh, then we have the name and logo of the different brands. This is the company. So we have a car brand. Car. So there's uh, car branding, individual car. So who was reading this part? Here. On the other hand, Anand Yushan is an uh, exception. In fact, his car model was named Sonata Anand in other words, according to the president of Beijing Hyundai Motors Corporation, when the position of original Sonata was already quite stable. If they include the uh, NF model under the Sonata brand, the Sonata may be affected, so they added a new brand. Okay, so... Uh, these brands, Sonata, let's just take Sonata as, a, as an example, right? It's sold all around the world, international. So they also keep the international name for this car. Just in Chinese, it's Suonata. The pronunciation might be a little bit different, but they keep the same kind of name. Okay. Uh, so we use this English and Chinese name. They use the English and Chinese name in the promoting. So we can see here, right, this is Sonata. It says Sonata in English and Sonata in Chinese. The Chinese characters, which means sonata. Is it always possible to find Chinese characters for English sounds? Uh, there are some that always. Usually, if I have a word in English, yeah. supercalifragilistic expialidosis. Could you write that in Chinese characters? Uh, no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but anyway, a simple word like sonata, you can write in Chinese characters. But uh, this was one car which was only using the local branding, the NF Yushan. Yushan. Mm. So this was called NF, it was a premium Sonata, and it was called NF Sonata in other countries. But they didn't use Sonata in this case, they just made a local name in this case. So what did they say? Why do they want to do this? You explained that the Sonata could be damaged if they, they could have some cannibalization if they made this NF Sonata. So they decided to make a different brand in Chinese market. So they don't want to affect the Sonata brand position. So this name means Royal, royal Flight in English. 
When we're making a Chinese name for a product, is it a good idea to make a name which means something nice? Do you think this is a good name? Uh, Yu Xian? No. No? You don't like the name Royal Flight? Uh, Do you, can you see the characters? Because in China, just telling you Yu Shan could mean about a hundred different things, right? Uh, uh, you have to see the characters and say the tone correctly. I think this kind of name is too low. What do you mean by too low? Uh, um, not fashionable. Hmm? Not fashionable. Not fashionable. Do Chinese people like very high? But this is royal. It's very high. Flying is very high. <laughs> Still too low? <laughs> yes. How can you make more high names? So they're anyway they're trying it seems like they're trying to make some high or premium. This is premium product, right? <sighs> so then the next part is the positioning. Yes. Yes. All brand slogans were in Chinese. Uh, for instance, accent target the urban generation. Original slogan is the first car of my family. Uh, but based on this, the slogan which translates as starting a happy journey. The character of the brand was useful and energetic and fun. Okay, so they changed, they kept the name the same, but they made local slogans for each car based for the target customer. Okay? So what was the example you gave? Starting a happy journey? Or the first car of my family? Ordinary slogan is the first car of my family. Tenth mm -hmm. uh, rate slogan is starting a happy journey. Oh, ah, yes, so they, want, they made the target customer is the first car. So they made the slogan, uh, starting a happy journey. <sighs> so they want the image of youth, youthful, energetic and fun, right? Yeah. That kind of thing. So the accent, this was the accent. Other ones we have is the supreme vehicle, the only one for you, that kind of thing. So for this one, Yu Shang, we have the supreme vehicle. Do you understand the supreme? So uh, this is the main information. So what we have to do now is just uh, the information we, delete, we erased was mainly the background information about Hyundai and the Chinese market, right? So this is the main information about the branding strategy of uh, Hyundai in China. So we have to think about the problem. We're going to have a new car that we're going to brand in China. So. Uh, first of all, let's uh, <coughs> evaluate the current strategy. We have different uh, things we're going to use to evaluate it. So, first of all, I'll introduce the the way of evaluating or actually I think we have time to look at the just quickly to look at the figures some of the information 
So first of all, just discuss with your partner. What do you think about uh, Hyundai's branding strategy? What do you think is good about their branding? And what do you think is could be improved about their branding? Here we can see the main models manufactured by BHMC. The accent is 1.4 liter. Do you understand the difference between 1.4 and 2 liter? Lantra 1.6 liter, their biggest selling car, Lantra 62%. How much is this 113,000 RMB? How much is that in dollars? Many RMB is one dollar. Six. So divide by uh, six. It's going to be $20,000. Okay. Sonata, a little bit more expensive. This one, the premium, 2.4 liter, the NF Xiang, 2.4 liter, the premium one. They have just some SUV, the Tucson. So, this is the brand positioning of Hyundai. So we explained about the worker and the customer working together. Brand image positioning of uh, Hyundai. This is uh, some of the competitor's name has been uh, removed. But here we have things like practical, smart, aggressive, refined, stylish. We can put all these things on the graph. It's like a product positioning graph. But we put more things on here. So our brand image positioning. So uh, we see BHMC is here, which is stylish. and. Not so much practical, practical is more over here. Kia's, probably, Kia's brand is more in the practical side, right? 
Uh, I drive a Kia. I'm more practical. I prefer just the price rather than the style. And refined and over here intelligent, those kind of words. So they ask people what do they associate with the company and they find out. This is a final analysis of the consumer purchase process we talked about, uh, Martin, you talked about. So first, we interview the consumers. We ask how much of you consumers are aware of our brand? So 92% are aware. But are you familiar with my, our brand? Yes or no? Less people, right? Do you have an opinion about this brand? Yes or no? Finally, are you going to consider this brand when you're making a purchase? Yes or no? So we can see that BMC's problem is they have high awareness, but they have low opinion and consideration. They're, they're not... Uh, People are aware of their brand, but they're not considering as much when they're buying compared to the market average. So another brand we can see they have, it's hidden, it could be probably Volkswagen we saw was the main one. Here the opinion is 50% and consideration is 46%, but BMC is just 23 and 19. So a little bit of a branding uh, problem there. So. This uh, Yu Shang they made was the premium brand for elite and highly educated between 30 and 45. Monthly income around $2,000. Okay. Kind of thing. So uh, let's take a break now then for 10 minutes. Then we'll uh, discuss the. Evaluate their uh, branding strategy after the break and make a plan for another car.